Welcome, Logan Christopher here with the Legendary Strength Podcast, and got an exciting interview for you today with Mike Fitch of Global Bodyweight Training. Thanks for joining me today, Mike. Hey, Logan, thanks for having me, man. It's always a pleasure to to get on the phone and talk to you for a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. For those of you not familiar with Mike, he runs globalbodyweighttraining.com, which I am happy to say I had a hand in helping to get started. Uh, he provides tons of awesome information, obviously, on the topic of bodyweight training. He was real big with the idea of animal flow. We'll talk about that a little bit, which, you know, everyone in bodyweight training has done animal movements before, but he brought in influences from breakdancing and some other fields to really create something new with it, which has been a whole lot of fun. Uh, but the main topic that we're going to be talking about today is hand balancing. And once again, bringing in influences from different areas of hand balancing and how to really put that all together. So, Mike, for people that aren't familiar with you, can you give a little bit of a background information on how you got uh, yeah. started into the field? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, uh, going going back to kind of to where I started with with fitness and exercise, and uh, I'll kind of give some some background before we get up to. Um, to, to the things that I'm doing now, but, you know, it's just, it's something that, it's always been a part of my life, I got into fitness, or at least lifting weights with my dad, he, and uh, he was, he was a big influence in my life as far as health and fitness goes, and, and, and then when I was uh, 17, 18 years old, I, I, I moved to, to LA, fresh out of Kentucky, and, uh, uh, I I was so into to really trying to to learn more about fitness and 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 more about weight training and and the things that I had at that point had exposure to that I decided to hire a trainer, and so 17 18 years old hired a trainer and this guy was so absolutely influential in my life as far as just his willingness to give information and um, you know I was just blown away and I wanted more and, and then within a year I, uh, after working with him I just decided you know this this is what I want to do this is what I want to do and he's actually, actually still keeping contact with him he's now a doctor of Chinese medicine he's kind of taken his whole his whole uh, journey to a whole nother level and so anyway so I spent the the last 15 years as a trainer in the the health and fitness industry and uh, just the majority of that time just obsessively just gathering information about different training styles and different philosophies and really getting into different you know gurus if you will but just exploring all all these different avenues of fitness and eventually kind of found myself uh, about three years ago a little bit more than that now I found myself where I was just lifting a lot of weights, man, and I, I all I wanted to do was just lift weights and, and just be jacked up and and uh, and basically after a while I was you know I was 50 pounds heavier than I am now and I just felt awful. I didn't feel well. I didn't move well. Uh, I always had some kind of aches and pains, some stuff going on. As much as I knew about proper periodization, biomechanics, anatomy, movement, things like that, that uh, it just, it, after a while, I knew that I needed a change. And so what I did was I just decided to put down the weights all together and only study body weight discipline. So this was at 30 years old. I decided to kind of check out gymnastics, uh, which led to parkour, which led to circus arts and hand balancing, and then eventually break dancing, which was <laughs> humbling, uh, not being much of a dancer myself or having much <laughs> rhythm other than <laughs> playing guitar. But So it, it just really opened up my whole idea of, of of what athleticism was and it just you know it was like I had all these new toys and I just got to realize that there were so many you know so many different ways that I could put my focus into training where I was just really bad at a lot of things as much as I thought that I knew about movement and about uh periodization and programming and, and resistance training I just realized that I was just I was just in the infantile stages of what now I understand fitness to be or health to be and so it was just this huge journey and then I, I, I uh, it was so so uh, you know just explosive for me as far as, as just changing my outlook that's where I really started GBT 
And I said, okay, well, I really want to share this with other people because it, it just it was it, it was so impactful in my life. And so that's why I started Global Body Weight Training. And that's when I reached out to Logan Christopher <laughs> because <laughs> I barely knew how to turn on my computer. And uh, so I needed some help. And, and I'm a really big fan of the idea of if you want to learn something, you find a coach and you pay them what they're worth and you just you become a student and you just you know just absorb as much knowledge as possible and and that's what I did did with you and and you helped me a lot and I always give give credit to you when I talk to people about starting an online fitness program or an online fitness website or whatever it was uh so again thank you my friend <laughs> you're quite welcome <laughs> and have to say it's 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 nice to be able to like point to you you're definitely my most successful student in those regards so uh i mean the credit all goes to you uh, you're actually the one that took action and ran with it and to see how far you've gone with the different things is uh, it's amazing Ah, oh, well 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 thank you well it's it's uh you know i and and, and the cool thing and, and you and i have talked about it before but it's just that idea of you know we're always a, we're always a teacher we're always a student and we we just if if we open our minds and and we can just we can just you know excel and just gather information from different people and and mm-hmm. now you know I'm I'm kind of doing that for other people and giving them my experience with creating you know an online presence and relaying some of the information that you'd given me and then some of the stuff that I just picked up on the last you know I guess three years or so now that uh, I've just been kind of developing GBT and animal flow. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's correlated with the training as well. There's so many people to learn from, so many different disciplines, and you can both be getting coaching and learning from people and be uh, teaching other people at the same time. In fact, those really go hand in hand. If you want to get good at something, teaching it is the best way to do that. You're absolutely right, and and I've had the opportunity to go around and teach a lot of really fantastic coaches and fitness professionals, uh, teaching them the animal flow workshops, so they become animal flow, excuse me, animal flow certified. And man, just just going and teaching, I learn more about the program every time I teach it. I learn more about the program every time I work with these new students. And uh, you know, I think I, I think when we stop learning, that's just <laughs> You know, we're just dead. When we think we have nothing more to learn, I think that's when uh, we just really start to regress. So mm-hmm. it's been uh, it's been really powerful just having that opportunity to go around and work with people. And even though it's I'm I'm repeating similar information, I really do get to learn something new every time because I get to watch people move and explore their own bodies. And things come up, questions come up, feelings come up. And then we get to address those, and then, you know, sometimes people will bring up really interesting points that we'll get to kind of dive into a little bit. So it's just, you know, it's just a great experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of you were talking about a little earlier that you had done all this previous weight training, but body weight training, that's really where it sort of opened you up to these whole new areas, and you realized how little you knew about movement. I mean, I, I definitely like using weights and still use them regularly a whole bunch. But really, body weight training is something that I always return to, if not something I'm always doing regularly. I do find that really because the tool that you're using is your own body, you really get to explore that whole idea of movement so much more and the disciplines you were talking about and the stuff we're going to talk about here. Just how deep you can go with it, just is, it's truly an amazing thing. You're absolutely right, and and I, you know, it's one of my favorite topics is is not only movement but also just that whole idea of self mastery and skills practice. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. such a huge, huge thing. And when when people kind of even begin to start flirting with that and start experiencing that on a very base level, um, and just for example, so in, in our in our animal flow workshops, we'll, we usually start people, one of the, the first things that we'll start with is, is basically just called a static beast. 
And our static beast, you know, it's, it, it's a four points of contact. It's like a regular quadrupedal movement. The knees are about an inch above the ground. We go through these series of activating the different sections of the body. And then we just have them hold this isometric position for 30 seconds. And, mm-hmm. man, just to see some of these guys and gals who have, have spent so much time lifting weights and using external loads to really put themselves in a closed chain environment like that where their entire body has to communicate and do it in a way that's seemingly easy but <laughs> can be so absolutely challenging. It's incredible. And, and just getting people back inside of their bodies and allowing them to connect because let's face it, man, so many people just walk around disconnected from their bodies all the time. And with body weight training and things, you know, that, that fall under that umbrella of self-mastery and skills practice, I mean, you have to be conscious. You have to be aware. You have to be connected. And it really forces that person to come back inside of their body, and it gives them a very good idea of what they're willing to do to achieve a specific goal. Yeah, absolutely. And then if you lift one limb while in that movement, then you open up a whole new world of difficulty. (laughs) Exactly. Now you've got a rotary component that you're adding to the body that shows up everywhere. So from the hand hand position, through the elbow, through the shoulder, through the um, um, scapula thoracic joint, through the rest of the lumbar spine, into the SI joint. Like, I mean, you've got your entire body is fighting now this rotary aspect. And it's just something as simple as that. And, And people are like, man, you know, it's almost like a magic trick. (laughs) <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's like, wait, how how does my hand feel like it weighs a thousand pounds now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's dive into the area of hand balancing. You know, a lot of people once they get started with body weight training, they get some progress. They end up doing handstands against the wall. That leads to handstand push up. And then for many people, they start thinking of the idea of doing uh, freestanding skills, holding the handstand, doing freestanding handstand push-ups. Was that sort of how you got started with it, or what happened for you? Well, I, I have to, again, give you, you know, give you credit for for your uh, influence. I mean, you know, I, I, I've been checking out the lost art of hand balancing for, you know, quite some time, and I think that's actually how I eventually found uh, that you were doing coaching uh, as far mm-hmm. as, as designing the website or, or putting together uh, websites um, and so you know again giving you props for being kind of one of the the pioneers and putting out information out there that that was based on hand balancing which is a very specific skill and, um, and and I think I think a lot of you know there's a lot of people that are drawn to that you know because it's one of those things where Look, everyone wants to be able to do a handstand and, and be able to really nail it and just lock it out. And, and I think it's one of those kind of, you know, secret goals or talents or skills or whatever that I think that everyone somewhere uh, really wants to be able to do. And, you know, whether it's to, to win a bar bet or to, <laughs> to, to just pull out, uh, you know, as to kind of show off their, their skills ability. But whatever it may, do, may be, I think it really is just something that a lot of people really want to learn and they want to master. And so I've had this very long, uh, interesting, sometimes volatile relationship <laughs> with <laughs> hand balancing because it really is an elusive skill and I don't think people realize just how much dedication discipline and commitment uh, that goes into really becoming even in uh, you know a a moderate to efficient hand balancer and I so for my own hand balancing you know it was it was something that right away I was drawn to so right away as soon as I started my practice down the whole body weight discipline uh, road the hand balancing really just it connected with me. It was something that I really wanted to learn more about. And I would spend the next couple of years and still will continue to spend the next however many years, hopefully until the day that I die, practicing hand balancing. Because in my opinion, mm-hmm. I don't feel like, you know, I feel like there there's just no limit. I mean, there's no point where you're just like, all right, I am the master of that. I'm going to move on to something different. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it, it can go so far. And that, that that's an interesting thing about body weight training. Really, since the sort of weight is static in your own body weight, yes, you can play with leverages, 
But uh, it, it, as you pursue higher levels of strength, uh, with bodyweight training, it really does move more and more into a skilled territory. Hand balancing is just uh, one area where that's true, but there are several other different gymnastic strength feats. But the skill work becomes even more important. And like you're saying, the, it is a very difficult area. So that's some of the challenge and what makes it, uh, you know, more of an achievement when you can finally pull off some skills that you've been working on for a long time. Ab- absolutely. And, you know, I always talk about my workshops and, you know, and obviously I don't want to discredit uh, weightlifting at all because there's obviously a huge skill component to, to weight training and it's something that I, I use for a very long time. Um, currently mm-hmm. I haven't touched an external load in three years and all that is, is that's just my own journey and I know how how much I enjoy the practice of body weight training, and I, re- I really see it as a practice, as I think most body weight practitioners do, is, you know, every day we can get a little bit, a little bit better. And I think it's just that focus and that determination and that commitment and understanding progression and understanding how to, to alter or modify leverage and, um, and how something that seemed impossible uh, at one day, maybe three months later, it's just your warm-up, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and it, it's such a progressive skill, and then that's when we get into that, that whole idea of, of skill building, and I always say, you know, the cool thing about body weight training is it, it is a practice that we can do for the rest of our lives, and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I want to levitate when I'm 70, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I always talk about, uh, you, you know, I, I, I can't remember when I was weight training a lot. I can't remember putting five pounds on my bench press, but I'll never forget the day that I got my first muscle up or my first human flag or the first time I really locked in uh, a flat back or a hollow body handstand. You know, mm-hmm. and it's just those things. It's like, man, just the the, the level of accomplishment and gratification that you can you can experience is just, I mean, it's, it, it's undeniable how how potent it can be, and even just with with hand balancing, and with the video. Uh, well, I when I first started hand balancing, I, I learned an arch back hand balance, and that that was where I became comfortable comfortable with. And then I had a, a gymnastics coach who challenged me. Okay, yeah, why don't why don't you try to reprogram and learn more of a flat back or a hollow back or a hollow body position. And just retraining that took me so long and was so frustrating. Yeah, and that's a humbling experience. I've worked towards the straight handstand, and, yeah, it's, it's, it's a much more advanced skill. That's something I like to tell people, you know, if, if you're just trying to do freestanding handstands, you know, you can go with the arch back. It, it, it really is an easier skill to do, but there are definitely benefits you get when you can master that. Uh, straight bodied or gymnastic position. Yeah, and then even eventually getting to the points where you can you can alternate between the two, and you know mm-hmm. there's all these different body manipulation things you can do while in your balance. But you know I got to tell you, Logan, even from the time that we shot our hand balancing video, and and even just going back and editing it, editing it now, I can see the improvements that I've made in my own hand balancing practice so clearly uh yeah. and, and it's just you know i'm just like oh sometimes i'm cringing i'm like man if i could shoot that again now um, <laughs> you know and then i'm sure i would do the same thing five years from now you know oh, yeah. and then I, i've seen know, people that you know you look at a picture and they seem to have perfectly straight handstand line but they say oh and this picture is from a year later and just it, it's that much better you know an average person just looking at you couldn't even tell the difference but it right. really can be those subtle things that do make a huge difference. And it can take that long to really get that position because it is a tricky position to hold. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, and then and then just like we said before, it can be a very elusive animal. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, some days, especially when you're kind of in – in that beginning phase where you're really locking in those those neural connections uh, and the neural muscular connectivity is one day you may have it, two days later you may be all over the place. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and then especially when you get down to really fine tuning those positions, you know, you're talking about all that tactile response is coming from your hand position, and it's really talk about the kinetic chain. I mean, talk about how everything's connected. I mean, if you flex your big toe, that changes everything. <laughs> you know, and it really gives people a good idea of how everything in the whole body is completely connected. And 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 just having all of that proprioceptive con- contact and communication, and just allowing your entire body to to create that communication and create that that super highway of information. I always like to say, and uh, mm-hmm. it's just it's it's an incredible art, and it's something that I just respect so much, and I'm still continuing to learn about every single day. Yeah. So in your video, which I had a chance to view, and it's awesome. We've got so much stuff. What I really like about it is, you know, you're not just covering one style of handstands. You know, you have you talk about the curve versus the gymnastic, but really you break it up into four different sections, the gymnastic, parallettes, T-bars, and breakdancing. Uh, what was your thought process in having these four different areas, and really how do you go about combining them or do you was it really like you know you practice this a little bit then you moved on to this next area how, how did you go about that well it's it, you know whenever i start getting into the different body weight disciplines and in my own journey when i was learning gymnastics and then was learning parkour and then uh, you know, switch over into break dancing and, and and the different styles of body weight disciplines is one I realized, you know, just how they all integrate into each other and every body weight or body discipline absolutely matches up and they all integrate into each other and they all absolutely, in my opinion, complement each other. And even though we mm-hmm. talked about earlier how, you know, when you learn one style and then just retraining that engram or that program can take quite a bit of time. But, you know, I, 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 it's funny how people, how possessive people get about <laughs> styles, <laughs> right. you know, and like, no, that's, you know, that's a this and that's a that. And it's like, well, you know, it's all movement and it's all positive and it's all beautiful and it all, you know, it all should promote each other. But so, uh, you know, very similar with the animal flow where the animal flow is a combination of, uh, ideas and philosophies and, and movement links that you would find in these different disciplines. Um, I experienced that same thing when I was going through the different disciplines is, you know, seeing just how how similar they all were, but then the, the very intricate and very detailed ways that they were also different. And mm-hmm. so, you know, you may see someone who's who's very accomplished at gymnastic style hand balancing, but then to just challenge them with something that's even a little bit looser and, you know, maybe has a little bit more flair, like break dancing, or has a little bit more self-expression, um, it, it opens up this whole world where it just really brings fun back into the equation. And then it really gets into that whole idea of just multidisciplinary, you know, so maybe one day you feel like practicing more break dancing style um, hand balancing and creating kind of flows from one balance to the other. Whereas another day I may practice much more strict form gymnastic style hand balancing. Or one day you're out at the park and you want to decide to, to start doing some, some parallel bar, bar work. But I just want to kind of give everyone the opportunity to see all of those different styles and just try them out. So maybe you're an accomplished you know, hand balancer at, at gymnastic style, but maybe you've never had any experience with with breakdancing and then so you can try that out and and in the video you know this but we bring in I bring in my own coaches and just like I mentioned before I'm a huge fan of using coaches and um, just learning from other people and so I bring the coaches back in and allow them to demonstrate a lot of the movements because they're at a very high level um, within each each one of those disciplines so just to bring Mm -hmm. them back in and make sure that that the instruction is perfect and make sure that that uh, we have the expert in that field, I think is really cool. And, and again, I just think that they really all complement each other. And it just, it, it just opens up, you know, it opens up the possibilities for someone who may have just only experienced one style. And so, you know, just like the Animal Flow, just like the Hand Balancing DVD, it's all integrated, and it should all be integrated. And there's not one style; there's every style, and they're all good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's there's definitely going to be something for everyone because I don't think people really have experienced all the different styles in there. 
I know I, I've done definitely some gymnastic hand balancing, uh, parallel bars, a little T-bar work, but I really haven't done break dancing. And uh, for a while I thought, you know, that's something I should get into and start experimenting with. And with your DVD, I'm going to have a good place to start working on those freezes. And it looks just, just going through is like, oh, this, I, 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 you got good progressions going through the different movements. So it's going to be fun to practice. Oh, yeah, and, and I would love for you to to uh, post some videos of, of some of your progress or, or send them to me or, or, you know, whatever it may be because, you know, again, just j- we really want to show in this video how anyone can go from having zero experience with hand balancing to working their way all the way up to some of the more advanced moves or multidisciplinary. You know, so now they're, they're, they're mm-hmm. moving across different – different uh, avenues of hand balancing and it really is yeah. about building the foundation and then progressing because that's you know essentially that's that's what body weight training is it's progressing or regressing and then spending time and allowing that adaptation process to take place and mm-hmm. you know i think for a lot of people we're so, always so eager to jump to the next topic or to to want to go all the way to like the hardest variation that we forget just how powerful each one of those steps play in the overall progression and the overall discipline. So that's why we try to get as detailed as possible about, you know, just building the foundation and then working off of the foundation and then just moving your way up. And we don't even mention a lot of a lot of reps numbers or set numbers or, you know, Mm -hmm. even static hold times because I'm a huge fan of, you know, your body will tell you, you know, and if you're, you're, you listen to your body and you watch your body, your body will give you the best feedback known and and even Mm -hmm. especially videotaping yourself or having someone else there to watch you as well. But, you know, it's, it all goes back to that idea of self-limiting exercise. You know, as soon as form begins to break down, you're now creating a faulty pattern and you just stop, you know, and then you allow yourself ample time to rest and then you give it another shot. And so I'm, I'm a big advocate of that idea of, of our body is, is really, really our best trainers, you know, our, and, uh, and, and so as soon as form breaks down, you stop and you allow yourself to rest and then you progress or, and then you continue to progress. Um, but, you know, uh, it's just, uh, that's that's always my message is slow down enjoy the journey you know you'll get to mm-hmm. that point you'll get to the cool stuff later but you have to build the foundation first yeah absolutely uh, so what does your typical i know this is always a changing thing but could you give people an idea of what your practice looks like yeah yeah so um uh, like i mentioned before i i haven't touched a weight in three years and again it's i have nothing against weight training it's just um i feel like there's still so much that i want to learn in my own body weight practice that uh i'm just really focused on that at this point so it depends on the day and and it, let's say if i have a day where i'm i'm not traveling on the road quite so much or i may have a little bit more time in the morning maybe i'll do my skills practice so maybe in the morning i'll 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 work on a lot of the statics or my hand balancing progressions or even maybe some of the the aerial stuff or maybe my animal flow practice but I'm really into kind of setting aside time for skills practice if and then later on working on more of my my body weight resistance training so then maybe later it's muscle ups or it's uh, handstand push ups or it's uh, planche training or it's single arm push ups pistol squats whatever it may be um mm-hmm. But usually I'll, each day I'll have a focus. So whether that's, you know, like I said, whether that's one day at handstand push-ups. Um, and then usually I'll do some sort of circuit with my training. So I'll have the, the, the high skill or high neural demand exercise first. And then as, as neurologically I begin to fatigue, then I'll switch to more kind of basic hypertrophy training. And uh, I always like to call it kind of regressive or cumulative training. And with mm-hmm. regressive training, what I'll do is as I begin to fatigue, let's say, in a skill movement, then I'll immediately regress to the same pattern. But let's say, you know, it's, 
it's going from a freestanding handstand push-up to where as soon as form begins to break down, then maybe I'll modify it and then continue to condition by doing a, a Pike 90 handstand push-up, you know. And, and so I'll just kind of perform these regressive sets where I'll start with the highest neurological demanding exercise first, then as I fatigue, I'll continue the conditioning by going into a much more regressed uh, exercise that's still within the same pattern. Or if there's something that I'm really focusing on, then I'll do what I consider accumulative training. So let's say, you know, let's say if someone's just starting off and they can only perform one perfect freestanding handstand push-up, then they perform that one perfect freestanding handstand push-up, then maybe they move to another exercise, come back, perform their other perfect freestanding handstand push-up, you know, maybe go and do some joint mobilization work and then come back. And then so they're basically accumulating these perfect reps, mm-hmm. um, still keeping their, their neuromuscular system fresh, still not getting to the point to where they're fatiguing it so much to where they're creating faulty patterns or engrams. And so, again, I, I, no matter if it's in the same session or if it's different times of the day, I always start with the skills training first. Then as I begin to fatigue, then I really start adding in the less skill challenging or the less neural challenge, uh, neural muscular challenging exercises and really start increasing the conditioning or the hypertrophy style movements that are still within that same pattern. So every day I, I have a focus in my training, uh, both with skill practice and with just, um, let's say, strength hypertrophy, progressive body weight training. So, uh, you know, and, and, and then I'll, I'll sprinkle in flow or I'll sprinkle in, um, you know, pistol squat training if I'm also doing uh, planche work. But that's the idea is I just, whenever I'm fresh, I start with the, with the highest skill demand. And then as I fatigue, I really start kind of adding in or, um, or kind of blending in more regressed versions to where I can really start working on conditioning and uh, muscle building and strength. And so it's, it's always changing, and, it's all, and it always depends on what my body's telling me that day. Right. So you're training pretty much every day? Yeah, for the most part, I train pretty much every day. I take about one day off, um, and then, um, you know, and I, and I have this kind of thing where I always try to focus on these three very basic things, um, be be still, be fluid, be strong. And each day I try to hit those things, and, and my stillness training may be meditation, or it may be static holds. Then my fluidity training may be animal flow. It may be, you know, um, uh, top rock from break dancing. It may be just circular joint mobilization. Uh, It may be just um, body flow, not necessarily animal flow. And then the the strength component is, you know, my progressive body weight training where I'm still trying to increase uh, strength using my own body as the resistance. So I always try to hit those three things each day, and maybe it's in the same session. Maybe it's sprinkled throughout the day. Maybe it's more of like a grease the groove type of thing where, where I'm, I'm, I'm hitting a, a set or a couple of you know, seconds of statics uh, in between doing some other work. But I just try to hit those three things pretty much every day, and then I take one day completely off. Interesting. I like that. Be still, be fluid, be strong. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> yeah, and that, and that was kind of one of those, uh, you know, epiphanies I had when I was in Japan. And and it was, I just, I had a lot of opportunity to, to spend with animal flow while I was there. And I'm always the first one to say, you know, look, obviously I didn't create animal movements. They've been around for thousands of years. Uh, but it took me about three months to create the animal flow program. It's taken me literally every day since to learn it. And I'm continuing to learn it. And every time I teach it, I learn more about it. Um, But that kind of serves its purpose as my fluidity training. And some days it's animal flow, like I said. Some days it's other things. But but just hitting those three things every day, um, it it was just it just kind of simplified things for me, you know. And it was like I don't I don't have to do this today. I don't have to make sure that I do this. All I have to do is hit those three things, and they may look differently each each day. So it just kind of made sense to me. 
Yeah, I, I remember. I think it was on Instagram or something. But I stumbled on a video of yours doing some of the animal flow. I forget the exact move. But it was like an under switch to a, a scorpion switch, and you you transition the speed of the movement. And just seeing that, it was like one of the most graceful and fluid looking things in there. So it really does demonstrate how deep you can go with something that you know on the surface can seem fairly uh, simple. Uh, be it with the animal flow, of course, with hand balancing, but really any sort of body weight training practice if you take that time and effort to go deep into these exercises. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and that was another big, huge uh, component that I learned about the animal flow practice is is when I first started, you know, it was like, yeah, go, you know, go fast. Fast is cool. Fast looks cool. Feels cool, you know. And then mm-hmm. once I really started to understand the animal flow practice, I really started to understand the importance of slow flow, especially when we're talking about finding those imbalances in our chain mm-hmm. and really working through the imbalances instead of just kind of glazing over them. Because let's face it, our bodies are master compensators. <laughs> They're really mm-hmm. good at it. And, uh, and they'll, they'll do whatever they have to do to kind of mimic the, res- the, the movement that we want out of it. And so just taking the time and slowing it down and really understanding how we connect to the ground and, again, kind of creating that neuromuscular superhighway of information and just slowing it down, slowing it down. So then the slow flow became a big part of my practice. And then as I progressed, um, the tempo change became another huge component of it. So then it was it was really kind of watching, and I was kind of like to – to, to equate it to like a ball of light and whenever we're traveling in our flows or we're creating a flow it's almost like watching that little ball of light and sometimes it speeds up sometimes it slows down sometimes it redirects and it goes high and then it drops down low and then it rolls mm-hmm. in one direction for a few rolls and then it redirects the opposite and I just really like that idea of showing maximum control by being able to change the tempo so sometimes one movement's really slow into a load and then we explode out of that coil load and then we come back and we drop back down to a very controlled descent or or eccentric or you know rotation or whatever it may be but that's where i really really started to understand that flow process is that it doesn't have to be fast and it doesn't have to be slow all the time it can change and i think that mm-hmm. so that has such a high carryover for athleticism and just function of day to day life yeah i would say in order to really master movement you're going to have to have control over all sorts of different speeds from non-moving to slow to fast and everywhere in between and when if you can really do that then i'd say at like that point then you're really you know among other things but that's going to give you mastery of that movement yes absolutely Absolutely, and that and that just shows you know that shows your control. And again, kind of going back to what we mentioned earlier is you know people always want to get to the end. They want to get to the coolest part. Yep. They want to get to the you know the part. Or do as many there. reps as possible, which is usually done as fast as possible. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And then they miss the journey. You know, and, and yeah. the power is in the journey. And the, and that's why I always tell all of our students. It's like, man, learn learn this stuff as slow and controlled as possible. Once you do do that and you build the foundation, you can always speed it up later. Speeding it up will be the easy part. But learning it slow and allowing your body to create these very deep and solid engrams, then later on you can go as fast as you want. And especially with the animal flow, you then get to the point to where you can just free flow. And that's when you really have a very, very firm understanding of flow because you can you can almost turn off that conscious decision of where your next movement's going to be and you can allow your body to just take over and just mm-hmm. and it knows where to go and and you can create these very beautiful very fluid very seamless transfers and i think that's when someone really gets to the point where they really start to understand it and then you add in you know, and again, all these things kind of complement each other. So then you add in the hand balancing component, and there's a huge hand balancing component to animal flow. And so even mm-hmm. just being able to go from some of those movements into a handstand or into a breakdancing style, you'll see a lot of um, 
of elements of breakdancing and regular hand balancing and all these things in the animal flow. But just being able to transfer into a hand balance in all these different positions and then allow the transfer back down to a four-point contact or whatever it is. I mean, there's just, and again, that just shows how everything integrates. It all integrates. It's all good. It's all great. No one owns it. It's you know it's it's human movement at its finest. You know we just we we want to move. Our bodies are designed to move, and it's just you know hey, it's like yeah, take it easy. It, yeah, it may look like this. It may look like that. You know what? It is. It's parts of everything. Yeah. So it's um, yeah. that's always an interesting conversation to have. Yeah, that that brings up a question for me. Obviously, when someone is starting out, you know, you need to uh, pick, like, specific movements or specific holds and train those just so you get used to them. Uh, but as as you move along, how much of your training would you say you're, you know, is, like, specifically, like, okay, I'm going to be practicing this movement today, uh, you know, if it's, like, a single movement, or how often is it, you know, I'm really going to experiment with, you know, starting with this movement, but where I can go from there versus other times when you might just go like, you know, I'm going to explore everything, just flow with the movement. So how how, how does that sort of break down with your training personally? Um, I I think it's a, it's a little bit of it's a little bit of both, right? And and mm-hmm. and I you know from what I know of what you put out there, I think you always kind of like that almost that that chaos mm-hmm. um, approach to to training and really listening to your body and and. And, you know, even though I, I go in with a focus, so, like, maybe that day I, was, I had really planned on doing, you know, I don't know, slow muscle-up training uh, as a, a strength skill progression, and then I was going to kind of sprinkle in some planche training that goes along with it. Um, I always like to have a focus going into it, but then, you know, mm-hmm. as you know, that can totally change when your body starts telling you something different. You know, maybe that mm-hmm. day you realize that, that it doesn't want to do that that day, and maybe it it will morph. But at the same time, especially with the hand balance training and the skills practice, I mean, I think you really have to be pretty consistent uh, if you want to achieve a specific, you know, hold or a specific movement pattern or a progressive calisthenics pattern or whatever it is. I think there there has to be some consistency to it, and I, I think a, a lot of times is is sometimes people get so excited to, to kind of try different things that they're only putting in, you know, 10% of time into a specific movement, and then they move on to something else. And mm-hmm. you know, I'm a big fan, especially with the hand balancing. I know in my own training that I would always kind of have to pull the reins back and say to myself, okay, look, <laughs> if you want to lock in this movement, put the time into it you know, and really right. put the time into it, then then you can always play. You know, then maybe another day it's more about playing and it's more about trying a couple of different things. And then just, you know, maybe you have some time and you want to put some music on and you want to go from some handstands to and then flow into something else that jumps up into a muscle up, you know. And it's it, I always like that idea of just stringing things together. And I think I, I remember uh, uh, either an email or something that you sent out where you were talking about just practicing in the park and some kids asked you if you were a ninja. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, I, and I'm, I'm kind of the same way where I like that idea of just, you know, just a little bit of everything. You know, some days you, you want to go in and you just want to play. But I think there still has to be a certain amount of commitment and consistency when you're trying to nail – a specific thing, you know, a specific goal. And I think it's really good to dedicate some time to that. And even if it's just throughout the day, I, I you know, sometimes I talk about that with some, some clients mm-hmm. as well, is, is maybe, you know, maybe every hour when you're at your desk, you decide to, to stand up and walk over to the wall and walk your feet up the wall and hold 30 seconds on a wall-assisted handstand. You know, and maybe you do, you do that throughout the day and you just accumulate time throughout the day. Uh, but yeah, so I'm 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 a fan of both. I'm a fan of the chaos theory and a fan of just making sure that you stay focused uh, with your training. If there's a specific goal that you want to achieve, mm-hmm. well, I think that's a great answer, and that will really give you the best of both worlds. Because you obviously need consistency to get somewhere, but you also can't just stay at the same doing the same thing all the time. And really, if the 
one of the end goals, sort of, and it's not really an end goal, but is the exploration of movement of putting it together. That definitely needs to be have some dedicated practice to it by itself as well. So right. we have gone a little bit over time. Is there any uh, final things you'd like to mention? <laughs> um, uh, we could talk for hours. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm man. Sorry. I'm, sure, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm sure we could, and I like that. Uh, uh, let's see. A couple things coming up um, this this year. You know, we we have the hand balance video that finally came out, and um, I, I'm very I'm very proud of it. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I had spoken to you about mm-hmm. this before, but we we really kind of tried to, you know, when you look at at follow along highly produced workout videos like um you know the beach body series of you know um insanity and and p90x and things like that uh they're they're highly produced kind of follow along videos um whereas when you get into our world where it's more about the 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 transfer of information and you have you know really hardcore fitness enthusiasts and trainers who seek out information um, usually those videos it's it's really just about the education so you know it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be so highly produced so with this video we actually kind of wanted to do a little bit of both and so that's why we you know made the investment into making it really uh, you know, aesthetically, it's it's a very nice looking video, but at the same time, I feel very comfortable and confident that there's some really valuable information in there. So, mm-hmm. you know, if anyone's thinking about buying the video, um, I definitely check it out, and and I think they'll be they'll be pleased in many ways. So, we had the video then also upcoming this year. Uh, we Ryan Hurst from Gold Medal Bodies and I have have gotten together and are are doing a, a joint workshop coming up in February, actually next next weekend, and uh, we'll probably also videotape that, uh, or at least uh, before we do the workshop, we're going to do a video of some of the flow modules that we're we're covering. And that's the thing, it's not animal flow, it's not gymnastics, it's actually just body movement that's based around flows that are designed around progressive body weight training. So you may have one module mm-hmm. that's 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 a flow module that's based on a pistol squat, where another one is more based on a uh, vertical press, like a handstand push-up, um, that just then flows into some other movements. So we have that going on. Um, also this year we have we'll shoot uh, a series called the Key to Body Weight Training series, and each video slash slash manual will cover a different body weight staple exercise so like the pistol squat like the single arm push up and we'll we'll do a whole series of those throughout the year uh also this year we'll we'll be developing parallettes and rings so we really want gbt to kind of be the home of the body weight athlete and it's where you can go and you can find informational videos but also you can buy fitness ropes parallettes rings that we've all manufactured ourselves and that are our brand and are high quality, um, but also are, are not crazy overpriced. So we've just got a really exciting year coming up, lots of animal flow certifications all over the, all over the world, all over the country, and uh, some progressive body weight training workshops as well. So um, just a, a full plate, like I, I know, you, I know you, you also have as well. So <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Always working on some new stuff. Uh, so for anyone that is interested in this new hand balancing video, I highly recommend that, like I said, it is uh, very pretty looking, and I mean that in <laughs> the greatest terms, and it covers a whole lot of information. Like I said, with the uh, four different disciplines, it's going to give anyone a lot of information, a lot of territory, a lot of exercises to cover. So I'm actually going to uh, put behind this if you order through my link, which I'll have on the website. If you're listening to the podcast, just head to legendarystrength.com, click on the podcast tab, and you'll be able to find this. But anyone who orders, I also throw in a free bonus, give you some more hand balancing information that can go hand in hand with it to get you standing on your hands. So, Mike, thank you very much for this. I had a blast. Thank you, Logan. And, again, you know, thanks – 
Thanks for helping me uh, begin my journey into the online uh, fitness realm. And, you know, again, uh, props to you for, for putting out uh, Lost Art of Hand Balancing and, and beginning to kind of pave the way for, for some <laughs> other guys to come up. Well, and, uh, I, I, I'm going to have to change the name of that website soon because with you and other people teaching handstands, it's not going to be such a lost art anymore, <laughs> <laughs> which is a good thing. That was always the goal with it, to really get more people doing and uh, happy to say that a lot more people these days are doing handstands than back when I started that, uh, damn, that was a, quite a few years ago now. Yeah, well, I think there's a lot of space for that in the fitness industry. I think people are really kind of gravitating towards more skill-based um, styles of exercise. And uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, uh, a round of applause to you for kind of um, being one of the pioneers and, and putting that out there. So, uh, always great talking to you, my friend. Yep, you too, Mike. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Stay tuned for our next podcast. Yeah, well, I think there's a lot of space for that in the fitness industry. I think people are really kind of gravitating towards more skill-based um, styles of exercise. And uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, uh, a round of applause to you for kind of um, being one of the pioneers and, and putting that out there. So uh, okay. always great talking to you, my friend. Yep, you too, Mike. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Stay tuned for our next podcast.